we were stuck in totally standstill traffic, just sitting dead still on the highway uh, with the rest of the cars right, right in front of the uh, lawn there. Um, I was in the left lane of the highway of Route 27 um, on the way um, with the Pentagon on my right. So I was on, on, this, on the traffic side of traffic closest to the Pentagon. And basically, without warning, there was just the sensation of something coming over the top of us. I didn't see anything in that, in that, first, that first instant, but it was just a sense of something coming over the top of our car. It's going to be about 20 or 25 feet. We eclipsed this pole, which I heard ended up being knocked over and hitting a taxi, which was near, near my car. I guess the natural reaction, looking over to my right, because the plane came right over, and, the, and I did see the plane as it came in. My car was in the left-hand lane. You know, the car, is, no one, of course, was going anywhere in the traffic, so it was, it was, in a sense, easy enough to just um, grab my prayer book for the sick and the dying, uh, my holy oils for anointing the, the sick and the dying, and my, um, my purple stole, which priests wear when they're administering. When they're Um, the sick, and so I got out of the car and just left it there and walked across the, the one or two lanes of traffic, whatever it was. I was always in the left-hand lane, walked across the rest of the traffic, um, and just went over to the guardrail and just was on the lawn there, maybe in the first, you know, after about a He admits he got out of his car within 45 seconds after the crash and crossed the guardrail to help console the dying and wounded. The problem is, Mark Farum, Navy Times photographer, remembers it differently. I was at the Navy Annex, up the hill from the Pentagon, when I heard the explosion. When the explosion happened, I ran down the hill to the site and arrived there approximately 10 minutes after the explosion. Then on a military press site... He literally had the stole in one hand and a prayer book in the other, and in one fluid motion crossed the guardrail, said Mark Farum a reporter from the Navy Times, who witnessed McGraw in the first moments after the crash. How can Mark Farum witness Stephen McGraw cross the guardrail within 45 seconds of the crash when he wasn't there for 10 minutes? One or both of them is either remembering inaccurately or lying. The plane clipped the top of a light pole just before it got to us, injuring a taxi driver whose taxi was just a few feet away from my car.